We're here in Columbus, Ohio for the 30th anniversary of the Arnold Classic. And it started with more compelling stories than one could have imagined. A rookie from Libya, now living in the UK, made his pro debut and shocked the world. While Whitney Jones tore ACL just four weeks ago, still competed. Brianna Ansley makes a statement as a first ever Classic Physique Arnold Classic Champion. Hello everyone and welcome to Prime Time. I'm your host, Mandis Buckle, and it's been a long day, but we're just getting started. Starting with the, with the fitness division, Whitney Jones came out in usual fashion with intensity and veracity. Always entertaining, Whitney mixes a high energy with dancing, aerobics to create crowd thrilling routines. However, as you can see, this routine brought a little bit of a different element. Whitney tore her ACL just four weeks ago. Now, if you couldn't tell, you would have never guessed by watching this routine. This fearless competitor not only competed, but as you see, brought the house down. And yes, walked away the 2018 Arnold Classic champion. She's now scheduled for surgery this Monday morning and expected to be on the mend, saying she'll be right back at it Tuesday Getting ready for the Olympia stage come September. Good luck, Whitney. Seconds. We didn't know. Um, always entertaining. Always a pleasure. Whitney, it, you had a, you tore your ACL four weeks ago, yet you still competed, and you walked away the champ. How was that even possible? Well, um, sadly, it comes with the territory. Injuries do happen. Um, unfortunately, an injury like this really sucks, but. I had neck surgery nine months ago, and ever since that day, I've been so focused on getting back on stage. And when this accident happened during routine practice a couple weeks ago, it was like, damn. But we got lots of skills. So I went back to the drawing board and found a way because I was not gonna tap out. No way, too close, worked way too hard. So I brainstormed um, from the day of surgery, came home, went straight to the gym, and started just thinking of what can I do with one leg? I know that sounds pretty crazy, but a lot of the stuff I do in my routine is non-conventional. So um, for me, it was like, let's get creative. I had a couple weeks to throw something together and with tunnel vision and fire in my heart, I made it work. Now Whitney, like you just said, you had neck surgery. And you had that less than a year ago. And you made a huge push to come back to get ready for this show. Then had this other injury. Uh, uh, Whitney, uh, how you keep pushing through is beyond our beliefs. Obviously, you're tapping into something else that allows you to just keep going and going and going. It's, I mean, for me, I am a, I feel like I'm a mental athlete as much as I am a physical athlete. And, you know, like I said, injuries suck, but if there's a way you can overcome it and put that aside so that you can get rid of every excuse, then you do it. That's the way I've been for the last several years, ever since I got in the sport and I love it. So you find a way, you find a way. If 
you know, I have two good arms. I've got a great neck now that's healed and I had one good leg. So it's like, let's get creative. Let's find a way. It was difficult trying to kind of make it look like I was using both legs when truly it was the left leg doing all the work. But it's a lot of mental strength, tapping into it, finding a way, knowing that nothing is going to stop you, being relentless, being fearless in everything that you do. And and that's my philosophy. That's my motto that I tell myself each and every day, getting on the floor, putting together something new in a couple weeks to come out here and, and win this. Now you guys put a lot of time and energy into your routines. And this happened three weeks ago. So did, did you have to go and revamp your entire routine? Yes, it happened closer to four weeks. So give or take a few days, yeah. but. <laughs> yes, yeah, and every day counts, but, but yeah. Um, because unfortunately my routine previously used a lot of two feet. Actually, my right leg's my prominent leg. So every skill I went through and broke it down, I went, nope, can't do that anymore, can't do that. I had to start from scratch and it was crunch time. But again, you get creative, um, it shows a lot. Am I gonna be good under pressure? Can I be clutch and, and pull this out? And I just kept focusing on do it, you can do it. Having faith in myself, knowing how bad I wanted this and that drive. Um, you know, the countdown from neck surgery to get back here helps solidify that passion. There was no option to give up. It just, it wasn't in me to tap out. Whitney, you have high energy routines. You're very athletic, very acrobatic. But let's be honest, I think we all just saw and heard why you really did walk away the champion, why you are so successful. I, th I think needless to say, somehow, some way, we will see you in September in Las Vegas. I think everyone can bet the house on that. Oh yes, I have surgery scheduled Monday morning, 6.30, so rehab starts Monday afternoon. Whitney, we wish you a speediest recovery, the best of luck, and we look forward to seeing your second title in one year. Always a pleasure having you on. Thank you so much for being a part of the show, Whitney. Yes, I'm working for it. Thank you. Thank you, me neither. More to come. Yeah! <laughs> In the figure division, we're starting to see a rivalry here between reigning Olympia champion Sid Gillen and last year's Arnold Classic champion Candice Lewis Carter. Sid looked great, but appeared a touch flat at prejudging, and Candice was just too strong today as she was conditioned full and crisp, leading her to her second consecutive Arnold Classic title and setting up another epic battle come September in Las Vegas, Las Vegas. We have Candace Lewis Carter here backstage at the 2018 Arnold Classic. Candace, thanks for joining us. Now, Candace, you won this show last year and went into the Olympia where you ended up taking second. Um, now you're back here this year. What was your, your mindset going in knowing that you beat Sid Gillen here last year at the Arnold and then she turned around and beat you at the Olympia? Well, coming into this show, you know, being that the title was mine, you know, it was everything for me to lose. So that was another uh, motivation that I had. Um, I kept telling myself during training when things got hard, is like, this is your title, so go get it, you know. And that was something I held on to. And knowing that, you know, finally being able to get a, a win, um, I've never won at the Arnold or the Olympia before. So finally getting that chance last year, it was something I wanted to relive again, and I knew it was possible as long as I continue to dig deep and do what I have to do. Now, Candice, you were up in Colorado there with your, your trainer and your coach, and you made a big move this last year. Um, you ended up going down to, to Texas. So tell us what that was like and what the transition like in preparation with your coach then still up in Colorado and you now down in Texas. Well, I made the move in June, so that was one of the, I never liked to give myself an excuse, but getting ready for the Olympia was extremely hard being in a new city. My husband actually was traveling for a whole month, so I was 
in a new city by myself, home alone, you know. So it was pretty hard to get used to like where to train and you know, it was I was totally out of my comfort zone. My trainer was in Colorado, so getting ready for the Olympia was extremely hard. I didn't think I was going to pull through, honestly. So training now for this uh, Arnold, I was like, I'm home. I got a good feel for where I'm at, so I got to redeem myself and you know make sure I kind of push myself that extra mile. Now, Candice, you won this show last year and you looked fantastic, but you even topped last year's look this year. You looked absolutely unbelievable. Um, again, congratulations. Now, you do, you are scheduled to do Australia in two weeks, I believe. Um, are you going to shut it down then and then head to the Olympia after that? Yes. Um so we do have a, a, the Arnold in two weeks, and yes, I'm definitely gonna be on my A game there, making sure I continue to have that title. You know, you're only as good as your last show. So I definitely wanna have that momentum going into the Olympia or a, another show if I decide um, to kind of give it a run before the Olympia. All right, Candice, we know you're itching to go get something to eat, so until next time, we'll see you later. And thanks for coming on, Candice. Thank you so much. Uh, we're both battling, so it's so good to have someone that pushes you along the way. So it's great. All right, bye bye. Candace Lewis Carter, your 2018 Arnold Classic champion for the second year in a row. Newcomer Brittany Campbell had a very nice showing. Although she did not crack the top five, keep her eye out for this newcomer as you're gonna see her make some noise this season. Veteran Heather Deesh showed that she's back and getting better and better, as last year she played six at this show, fourth at the Olympia, and finished third here today. Rounding out the top five was Michelle Silva in fourth, and Bajana Vasilova finishing fifth. Hey Heather, how are you? Glad you could join us. Now, Heather, you've really been on a roll. Last year, you finished sixth here at this show, finished fourth at the Olympia. Now you just finished third. What's your mindset like? Uh, you're really riding a high on a roller coaster here, aren't you? Well, last year I got sixth here at the Arnold, and I was determined to beat that. And so going into the Olympia, I was like game face on placed fourth there and of course I wasn't done so I wanted to move up. Luckily here I moved up to third. I'm working my way back up to those top spots and uh, that was my mindset was just to keep uh, going up the ladder. <laughs> now Heather you have a very unique situation. You're actually coached by your husband Justin. Very analytical mind. Um, we were talking to him earlier and he said he He's been breaking down what you've been doing over the last 10 years, your measurements, your weight, your muscle density. He goes on and on and on. He has a list of everything you've done over the last 10 years. It can't be too easy as the man behind the scenes is tracking every little detail of everything you've ever done. Well, I think you need those numbers as variables to make progress because without those numbers you don't know where you're at and so continually looking at progress pictures um, seeing like my strength or my weaknesses become strengths and seeing that muscle growth you're in the gym all the time so if you're not in the gym making progress like what's the point in my opinion luckily the sports evolved into um, like more muscular so I'm just trying to stay up with that more muscular look in the figure division I'm grateful that I placed so high ten well seven years ago when I was a first a new pro and I'm just trying to stay relevant in the sport so I think everyone needs to use some sort of variables to make and track your progress and it's awesome the way we work I'm so grateful for Justin he's insanely knowledgeable he's like a walking textbook <laughs> Heather it's always a pleasure catching up with you always smiling always happy always encouraging thanks for being on and if you end up doing a show um, before the Olympia, you gotta let us know so we can catch up with you uh, again then. If not, we will see you in September in Las Vegas. See you later, Heather. Well, I originally was gonna try and reclaim my title at the Hawaii Pro. I found out uh, just recently that they're not having um, 
the open figure pro class. They're just having masters, so I don't, I'm not quite there yet, so I'm not gonna do the masters there. So I'm actually, uh, the goal was to do that and then do the Olympia. I don't know if I'm gonna do a show in between now and the Olympia, now that the Hawaii Pro's out. So we're kind of gonna play around with it and see. If not, I will definitely be at the Olympia in September. In the most unlikely of scenarios, 46-year-old Kamal al Garani from Libya, now living in the UK, made his pro debut here at the Arnold Classic in the 212 division, and he shocked the world, walking away with the title. Yes, the title, outlasting champions such as Jose Raymond and David Henry. The most daunting of tasks for anyone to achieve, let alone a 46-year-old rookie in his pro debut. Now, now this is a story this is a story that, unless it was documented, I don't think anyone would believe. Kamal, wel welcome to the show. Um, you are a 46-year-old IFBB Pro rookie making your pro debut at the Arnold Classic, and you just walked away a champ. Uh, it, it, that, that doesn't make any sense what I just said, but it's the absolute truth. Tell us what's going through your mind right now. And, and, and can you believe that you're here and this just happened? Well, first of all, you guys, you couldn't believe it. You couldn't believe it, could you? How do I could believe it? <laughs> Very true. Still, is it true? Yeah, it is true. That will show you one thing. How fur the pro league judges they are so to come to this stage as a first time nobody knows you to look at you you the winner and to give you what you deserve that's a big massive thing that's what's the sport supposed to be that's what that's why we're here to be honest to be fair if you want to grow and if you want to get bigger and bigger and bigger, because I had a lot of experience with the profession, with the amateur league, I won the world champion seven times as an IFBB world champion. As an amateur, I won so many shows. Sometimes what they do, and I can see them, after the result, they will take it back to their boss, changing the results. Today, when I said I'm 46, uh, 46 years old, I said, I'll do one show, I'll finish. But I'm not going to finish. I'm going to keep going. Well, of course you can't quit. You just won the Arnold Classic title. And, and not only that, you beat some really good champions. Jose Raymond, David Henry. These guys are, are legendary competitors. Year after year after year. Exactly right. So that that's, that's going to make me... I mean, it's gonna make it hard for my wife, my kids, my family, because <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a family man with four kids, so. But when you see people believe in you, so I'll have to be, I'll have to honor them. I will definitely do what I have to do. I think you honored your, come on, I think you absolutely honored yourself, your family, uh, your, your fellow countrymen, um, our president, Jim Mannion, who this is the reason why he 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 did what he did um, to give guys an opportunity. Well, to be honest, before the Arnold Classic, I've got signed. I've did sign two other shows, two contracts. I'm going to do the New Zealand Pro and then the Fuji Pro. So I said because I never thought I'm going to win from the first show, the Arnold Classic. It's like I've been blessed to get invited to get like separate for an invitation, but to win. I said, well, I have to do more shows, you know, to get my points and to whatever. So now I have to do these shows because I've signed the contract. I have to honor these people, whatever I did. I'm doing these two and then I'm going to relax to keep going to the Olympia. For all of those out there, a lot of us don't know who you are, quite frankly. Um, give us a little bit uh, about your background, who you are, what you've done, and, and, and how you got here to this place today. As an amateur, I think a lot of people, they know me for amateur, but as a, a pro in America, I will, nobody knows me. Of course, there's nobody knows me. The amateur, so many amateur, but the pro, the, the, 
the Arnold Classic, and that's the biggest, the second biggest show. So now everybody, of course, is knows me. But again, the road to come here, it did take me, it take me a long time because I was fighting to get my pro card from them five years. They refused to give me my pro card. They want to keep me, especially now, even like when they said to me, you banned you this for water, all the problem, what happened. After Jim Manning, they split with the Federation, with the Amateur League and the Pro League. So I received my pro card from Jim and thanks him. He's the man, he's made this happen. He, he, without him, I couldn't have been here. To be that man, he is he's down the earth. I never knew him. I have been introduced by um, Rico Barakat to him, explained, came here, went to Pittsburgh, explained to him about my life, what's happening. He sees my picture, he saw my physique. He said, why? So he spoke to Rafael, said, why are you not given his pro card? So he was given some excuses, some that. And then after I got my pro card, the amateur, because they've got their own pro elite or pro something, they've sent me an invitation and they've sent me a pro card. How cheap they are. He has given us the absolute best platform there is. Without him, this, this story isn't even possible. Well, come on. Now you're going from the unknown and the absolute underdog with, with zero expectations to you're an auto classic champion. You've put yourself on the map. And now there are expectations. Yeah, it's. Uh, I don't know I'm going to handle that because it is too big, I think, for me. I never thought it was going to be like that, but it's happened to me. I'll have to, um, I'll have to find somehow to keep up with it because it's going to, be, it's a, it's a massive thing. It's a mass, it's a big thing to me. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going. I don't know. I'm going to handle it. You know, you found your way to Pittsburgh to have a meeting with with Mr. Mannion. Uh, you found your way to get an invite to the Arnold. You found your way here. You found your way to win the title i have a feeling you're going to be just fine and find a way to do well come september at the olympia oh yeah that's that's uh, to be at the olympia i have to i will because this is my dream to be at the olympia stage so i'll definitely find a way i will definitely inshallah I'll definitely be at the olympia um i will um, try and work on something that's i don't know i need to work on more to look even better in the olympia Thank you guys. Thanks for interviewing me. It's a pleasure. Veteran Charles Dixon gave Kamal everything he could handle and then some, but found himself just short finishing second. This, however, is the best showing we've seen of Charles in a long, long time, if not forever. Nicknamed the tank, Charles packs on more muscle than anyone in that short frame, but often sacrifices control of his midsection. However, today, Charles was not only in full control, but looked like a trimmed down, tapered down version of himself. If this is the new look Charles plans on maintaining, look for huge things from him this year. Rounding out the top three was Samil Tra Samir Trouty, who brought a nice combination of balance, symmetry, and conditioning. With a touch more size, Samir is primed to win just about any 212 show he enters. In the women's physique division, it appears there might be a changing of the guard as three of the top five finishers are all under 25. Michaela Laacock edged out veteran Kira Newman and that we saw a battle that might be coming for the age for the ages as Natalia Cohen and Shanique Grant went toe to toe. Natalia brings great symmetry and undeniable razor sharp conditioning However, Shanique packs on more muscle in her superior structure, and that was just too much for young Natalia as she walked away the, with the biggest title of her career. And perhaps, just perhaps, Shanique is now prime for the battle many have been waiting for to see her in Las Vegas come September. Your 2018 Arnold Classic champion, Shanique Grant. It sure sounds good, doesn't it? Shanique, you moved this past year from New York to Chicago. Tell us a little bit about what that transition was like for you because that, that's a pretty major step in anybody's life. It just um, got me in a better place. Um, I have more clientele based on Chicago and um, 
I'm with, with my boyfriend now, and he's just a great support system. His entire family's here, and I'm just more at peace um, with my surroundings, and um, I just feel more comfortable and just focused on the goal. This entire prep was really smooth. It was hard, but um, it's been one of the best preps so far. So, you know, I came out on top, and, you know, it all paid off. Well, obviously the move did you well. Um, you looked fantastic last year at Tim Gardner production, Karina Nascimento's show, um, where you walked away victorious. But you even topped that look. You looked even better this year. Um, it's just, I want, I wanted this so bad. And I knew that the Arnold Classic is a very, very tough show. So each prep, I just kind of pushed it into higher drive, higher gear, and just, you know, make sure I'm on point with everything, waking up early, meals on point. Um, if anything um, is different in my last prep, I just make sure it's a little more stricter this time around. Like, you know, some people will have a little something to eat here and there, nothing at all. Um, it was just my coach was pushing me a little bit harder, but, um, you know, I handled it very well. Okay, Shanique, so here's the million dollar question. People have been waiting and waiting to see you on that Olympia stage for the last two years. So is this the year that we're finally gonna see you in Las Vegas in September? 2018 is the year. I am just going to take it easy, take a break. I'm gonna still stay on my diet, strict. Um, but I'm just gonna take it easy this summer and then I'm gonna kickstart my Olympia prep uh, late in July. Now Shanique, if you show up in September the way you look today, it's hard pressed to say that anyone can beat the look that you brought today. Has that really sunk in yet? Like is there a realization of how, just how good you really can be and how good you really are? It has, and I've heard it um, in most interviews I've done so far, and I feel really confident, I'm really ready, and just as long as I keep the positive attitude and great energy, I feel like I'll have an even, even better prep for the Olympia, so I'm ready for it all. Well, hopefully that move to Chicago was the mental move that you needed to make. We'll see you in, uh, in Las Vegas in September. We wish you the best of luck. Thanks for being on, and we'll catch up with you again soon. Thank you so much. In what appeared to be the most anticipated matchup over the weekend, the Classic Physique Division, we saw current reigning Olympia champion Breon Ansley in a showdown with savvy veteran Arash Rashab. As you can see, this matchup did not disappoint as both were razor sharp and went toe to toe. In the end, Breon edged out Arash, walking away with the first ever Arnold Classic title, Arnold Classic, Classic Physique title. We are here with the 2018 Arnold Classic champion, Breon, and Breon, you're here with your dad. Now, Breon, you've, you've set the standard now for the Classic Physique division. Has that really set in yet? And is this something you set out to do? No, not yet, not yet. Um, it will, give, give it some time. Uh, the, the win has sunk in, the championship definitely has sunk in, uh, but just the magnitude of what it all means right now, uh, you know, and the, I think the, the platform that I have that where I could take this, to help take this sport hasn't sunk quite in yet, but it will and I'll embrace it and, and we'll go from there and we'll enjoy it and do whatever it takes. Brian, you're not a guy who competes a lot. You know, we talked about this in the past. Last year, you did New York, won New York, and went on to the to the Olympia, where where you won your first title. Um, are we to assume now that you were the first ever Arnold Classic Classic Physique champion that you're now going to shut it down until the Olympia again? Absolutely, we are. We're going to take a small break, um, travel a little bit. Um, and then uh, be ready to come back from traveling, right, Dad, and uh, yeah, yeah, and get ready to get ready to defend the the Olympia title come September. So we'll probably start prepping for that maybe um, late June, mid June, late June, 
uh, early early July and uh, be refreshed and uh, be ready to go to be two time. Look, we're our, we're, we're on the stage. We just got off stage talking about a, a, a Arnold Classic classic champion. Now we're already talking about defending the title of the Olympia. So uh, you're always looking always looking ahead. Always looking ahead. Speaking of looking ahead, Brian. Being a being an athlete who's always looking to to better himself and at your caliber, you know everyone's nipping at your heels now. What is it that you're looking to do to improve on your physique from now until the the Olympia in September? Yes, yes, yes. We always can improve on things. Always, uh, we already see them right off the bat. My my coach Chris Cormier and I, Brandon Gertis. Um, we see a little bit more full, fullness in places, chest, um, maybe a little bit more shoulders. We, we definitely dealt, uh, we definitely improved our back, our back development and our back thickness this time around, which was great. Um, so I think we're gonna now work on a little bit more chest and shoulders and uh, so we could just be undeniable. Now, Brian, listen to you talk, you can absolutely hear the artist in you. Um, and when we watch you on stage, you are like poetry in motion. You have a very artistic flow to the way you, you compose your routines, your posing. Even it looks like the way you've built your structure and what you're talking about changing. Is this something you put an absolute premium on? Yes, yes. And I love that. And, uh, you know, I've been a showman, right, Dad, all, all my life, uh, you know. I'm, and you come by it honestly. I actually. do come by it honestly. He's a showman. My mom is a showman. They love the platform, and they love to talk, and they love to entertain and tell stories and all that good stuff. So I come by it honestly, love them for that, for that gift, to gab, and to be the performer, and to really take center stage, you know. Um, I enjoy it. Um, I embrace it. I think, um, you know, I really have a lot to say with the message that I put out uh, muscle, muscularity wise. And even with my corner, Chris Cormier and Brandon Gertis, we always talk about the artistry and Samir Banut. We always talk about the artistry of presenting the muscle a certain way and, um, you know, designing the muscle. And uh, I'm so glad that um, Classic Physique is now taking storm and now gonna, so it's going to be all over the world taking storm and people are paying attention in uh, you know sp in those specifics you know about the artistry and about the the, the, the the magic work of presenting the muscle and how we do it so I just can't wait for it to continue to grow and for like I said up there on stage for it to help this to help bring this sport even more mainstream now you've got dad next to you there miles thanks for joining us um, it, we have a very interesting story now you were a sophomore at Iowa State where you were running track and playing football and uh, <laughs> yes and uh, dad challenged you to a race and there was a spot of 15 yards and dad beat you it, 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 am I hearing this right and at the time, Dad was 60 years old. I know where this. I already know. <laughs> 15 yard. I already know. Yard lead, I believe. I already know. Dad at the time was what was it? 60 at least. 60. Uh -huh. Miles running up one in that race. I win it. After 15 point, a 15 yard lead. <laughs> <laughs> you know, at that time, you were a sophomore in college. Yes, and I was fast. And playing football. And I was fast. <laughs> so. Uh, take nothing away from him. He got me, and you know, hey, it has to come from somewhere. I got to get my speed from somewhere, right? So here you go. And also, I'll, I'll even add something to that. He has leg pressed at 55, 60, 12 plates yeah, on each side. I've seen too. him leg press 12 plates on each side, yes. guys. 24 total plates. 10, total. Ten uh, reps. Right? Ten, Ten reps. reps. Ten 24 reps. total. 24 total plates, 10 reps. And so. I have two witnesses. His, his buddies in college. <laughs> they saw me. They were in the gym that day. <laughs> 10 reps. 10 reps, Brian. You can't cheat him on the reps. He didn't max out. He repped that. Brian, we definitely see where you get it from. Uh, the genetics, the gift of gap. Miles, it's been a pleasure having you on and talking to you. Absolutely. Thank you so very much, brother. And uh, love you guys. See you soon, okay? Brian, it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, you really are a fantastic representative uh, of, of the sport. 
um, of a champion and of the classic physique division. Now, you guys go on, enjoy a meal. Again, congratulations. Thanks for being on. Miles, good seeing you again. Guys, we will definitely catch up again soon, and we will see you in Las Vegas in September. What an amazing duo. Unbelievable. I, I don't know who's who's more amazing, Breon or Miles. I, we can definitely see where Breon gets it from. Miles is dead. Can you believe that? Beat him in a race, spotted 15 yards, and beat him at 60 years old while he was a soft while he was a sophomore in college running track. Can you imagine what the guys were saying to him then? Squatting 24 plates at 60 years old. Wow, he's something. We gotta get a story with Miles here soon, huh? Rounding out the top five was youngster Kevin Ford, who looks to have a very bright future. Veteran Danny Hester, who is a first ever Classic Physique Mr. Olympia, finishing fourth. And Courage Opara, rounding out the top five, finishing in the third spot. We did our best. We hope you did too. Here it is, everybody. Prime time signing off.